is Risa and welcome to the stitch long video that accompanies the kit review I did of a bumblebee stump work kit designed by Jill Kipnis from Inspirational Embroidery and I bought this kit on Etsy the link for which is provided below. Now I was able to use the materials in the kit to create two smaller bumblebees and this stitch along is going to show you how. If you want to know what materials are included in the kit, click on the link above to watch the kit review. In addition to the materials, you will also need the following items that are not included. A hoop, embroidery scissors, water soluble pen or H2 pencil or even a heat raisable pen. Um, and then you'll need a bee wax and some parchment paper. To stitch the wings, I'm going to take the organza material in the kit, the fusible paper that has a rough side and a paper side to it, and the golden net material. To begin, I'm laying the organza over a piece of cloth that I've used to protect the countertop, and I'm going to take the fusible paper here and remove the paper backing from it uh, before I iron it onto the organza. Now, I've placed the fusible paper in the corner of the organza but you can place it in the center of the cloth as well. Now on top of that I am laying this golden net material and to iron the two pieces together I am putting this parchment paper and putting a hot iron over it. So I'm just going to place the hot iron for about 5 to 10 seconds and you can keep checking periodically if the two materials have fused together. Now it does take a little bit of time. Now that's done, um, you can see that the golden net material has fused very well to the organza material and I'm just going to double check that all of it is nicely stuck together. Now the next step will be to take the pattern from the instructional material that you get in the kit and trace the wing onto the second fusible paper that's in the kit. Now you'll notice that there are two size templates in the instructional booklet and I chose the smaller of the two wingspans in order to be able to get two bumblebees out of the material in the kit. Now I'm going to place that over the organza side of the material and fuse it with the iron just like we did the first time around and once that's done I'm going to trace that pattern on the flip side onto the golden side over a light pad as you can see here. So essentially that fusible material was there to trace the pattern. Once that's done you can remove the paper and you'll see the pattern drawn on the golden netted side which you will need to mount on a six inch hoop and then mount it on an embroidery stand if you have one. Next I'm going to stitch the wings with the metal pearl and first I'm going to use the bee wax to toughen the golden couching thread that's there and all you need to do is run it across the wax and then I am going to pull this little pearl slightly apart so that when I stitch the thread sort of sits ne neatly in between the edges there and as you can see you just stitch normal stab stitches on or around the pearl here and when you pull it you'll hear a little pop when the thread sort of sits in between and just keep doing that um, along the pattern lines. Now I've gotten to the end of the upper wing and I'm just bending the pearl along the pattern line for the bottom wing and um, I'm going to snip it off approximately and maybe snip it off a few more times until I get the right size to fit in that space and stitch the final couching stitches onto the pearl. The next step is to stitch the veins on the wing and I'm going to use one strand of the black floss and as you can see there are six strands here and so I'm going to pull out one strand. I've already finished one wing and what I'm stitching here are fly stitches. 
The instructions give you directions on how to stitch the fly stitch and you can follow along as I stitch it in the video. Now I'm going to take the silver thread in the kit and stitch three stab stitches of varying lengths on the top and bottom wing as per the instructions in the booklet. The final step is to now cut off the wings before we stitch it onto the fabric. So I'm just going to do that, cutting around roughly, and I'm going to use Fabri-Tac to glue the fabric and the pearl. So this is essentially to ensure that when I cut around the wings and I accidentally maybe snip some of the stitches, the pearl still sticks to the fabric. So these are my second set of wings. I had already stitched a pair earlier and now they're done. I'm really happy at how these bumblebee stump work wings have come together and I have two sets for my two little bumblebees in the pattern. Moving on to stitching the body of the bumblebee, I have photocopied the bumblebee and I have increased the size by about 115% in order to get the proportion for these sized wings. And now what I'm doing is I've placed sort of the location of the bumblebees and the names of the boys, and I've used Sticky Fabri Solvi by Sulky to uh, print out the names and then cut it out and place it in the pattern. Now going back to the instructions, I just wanted to show you the pattern here again. As you can see, there's a small and a bigger template and I've taken the smaller template and increased that by 115% and what I've done is I've also traced it out on the Solvi paper um, and the good thing is that you can apply it on colored material and just stitch over it and it dissolves easily with some water so that's what I'm going to do and I am marking out the lines for the antennas and the legs and feet for the bumblebee and that's what I'm going to stitch and then later I'm going to mark out the body for the lines or the embroidery that I'm going to be doing. Just to mention that I'm using a Frixian heat erasable pen here uh, so that makes it easier for the lines to disappear when I iron it or put a hot blow dryer over the finished embroidery piece. Now what's a bumblebee without its cute trail behind it, right? So I am just drawing a little trail here for the two bumblebees and I will stitch that later. Uh, so now I'm using one strand of black thread to stitch back stitches or straight stitches for, uh, for the legs uh, here. The next thing to do is to stitch the head and I'm using the black felt that's in the kit and I'm using a white embroidery pen to trace out the size of the head and what I need to do is trace out two pieces, one smaller piece and one slightly larger piece for the head and essentially cut them both out and then use that or stitch it onto the head of the bumblebee. I'm going to first stitch the small of the two pieces on the head using stab stitches and then the larger one on top of it and I'm going to make sure I stitch from the outside in to arrest the felt pieces. Now I'm going to take two strands of the black thread 
and stitch straight stitches starting from the center going towards the right first and then going towards the left and uh, that's it the head's done and uh, don't forget to stitch two eyes with French knots now taking three strands of the yellow I'm going to start stitching turkey stitches here. Do that by entering the fabric from the front, as you can see, and you leave the ends without a knot. Take the needle on the left side of that stitch and insert it onto the right of that first stitch. And that way you arrest that thread. Now bring it back up close to the first stitch and insert it into the fabric and leave loop a large enough loop so you can see what you're doing and simply repeat the process bring the needle up again close to the previous stitch arrest that loop by stitching a stab stitch to the right bring it back up next to that stitch create a loop and so on and so forth you can watch the video carefully to follow along now according to the instructions, I'm going to stitch three rows of yellow floss followed by four rows of black, four rows of yellow, four rows of black again, and then three rows of white. Now I'm not sure this is all going to fit in this size body, so I'm going to sort of plan it as I go. So this is now stitching the black row as you saw I entered from the front again just like I did for the yellow floss so that's my second row and then that's the third and fourth and now moving on to the yellow row Now it's time to cut off all of the loops with an embroidery scissor. Try to use a small scissor, not a big one, so you don't accidentally ruin the fabric that you're working on. And so once the loops are all cut off, I am going to trim this little bumblebee. And uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to trim it all. Um, apparently, it should take me at least an hour or so to work on it to get it all smooth. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna really work patiently because I don't wanna ruin all of the hard work that's gone into it. Uh, so I'm gonna make bigger cuts here and then sort of just prune it down to size. Once that's done, the final step is to stitch the wings onto the two bumblebees here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with one strand of black thread. So the bumblebees are done and I've already started stitching the names and I wanted to show you how I had to fix a mistake here. I removed the lettering that I'd already stitched and you can see there's some holes in the felt and now I'm going to remove the last remaining letter that's there and I'm going to remove it from the back of the embroidery. You can see the holes are quite visible on the felt and so I will need to fix that before I can stitch over it again and I'm going to show you how to do that as soon as I finish picking all of the threads. So here you go, you can see the holes and to fix that I have cut out pieces of the felt and I'm going to pull out some of the felt 
and apply it on top of the old lettering here. Now it's going to take me a few minutes to pull out the felt that's required and I am going to use a felting needle that I luckily had and I bought this from Felted Sky on Etsy and I'm going to use a number 40 and a number 38. Both are needed for finishing uh, when you're doing felting and if you do work on um, felted fabric for embroidery it might be a good investment to buy some felting needles. So I'm going to use this yellow one here and I'm just going to punch in the felt that I'd pulled out onto the fabric. I finished felting one part of it and so you can see that the two letters are covered and the rest of it still needs some felting work to be done. Uh, so you can see that it really blends in with the original look of the felt. And now I just wanted to show you why I felt it from the front and not back. See, if you were to felt it, it uh, creates this puffy look and you don't want that to show up on the front of your fabric. Uh, so it's better to felt in from the front and then you'll see that it just blends in beautifully with the rest of the material and it looks like you didn't make a mistake at all and for good measure you turn the fabric around and just sort of ruffle the felt a bit and you'll get a little bit of puff that you can pull away and this ensures that uh, the felt pieces spreads well and smoothly as I said, I finished the lettering for one of the boys and now with that part of the felt all fixed, I am going to embroider the second name on the fabric. And I'm using the Solvi paper that I had and I'm going to stitch um, satin stitches with a variated blue thread. I've cut out a little bit of the Solvi paper so it's easier for the paper to dissolve once I apply water to it and as you can see it, it dissolves easily and I'm using a sponge to soak up some of the water. Now the names are done so the next thing to do is to embroider some flowers around the names and you can choose this flower here or flower of your choice to embroider some along the corners of the names if you want or you can leave the names as is. Here's the completed embroidery. I'm super happy with how it's come out. I was able to stitch two bumblebees out of one bumblebee stump work kit that I bought from Inspirational Embroidery. You can, of course, uh, choose to just stitch one larger bumblebee. I hope this video was useful uh, to you. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to click on the subscribe 
like and notification buttons. See you again next time. Bye-bye.